Have you ever had to tell your boss that you were wrong? Have you ever had to tell your boss that he was wrong? Have you ever had to tell the most powerful man in your world that his dreams for the future were completely off base? I have. For a moment, all the pride and wrath of a powerful monarch rested on David's brow like a thorn of crowns. I actually thought I might die. And then I could see a transformation take place. But hang on a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself. My name is Nathan, and I am a prophet of the Most High. You probably know that my name means gift. And you can probably imagine that uh, my job sometimes isn't a gift. I mean, sometimes when you speak for God, you have to voice the truth, even when you're wrong. And when you don't know what will happen next. And I had been wrong, though I'm not sure it was entirely my fault. It happened like this. David the king had, had finally ascended the throne of a united kingdom. He conquered Jerusalem and set up his capital city there. Then we brought the tent of the presence up to Jerusalem. That tabernacle had housed the Ark of the Covenant ever since the days of Moses. And now Yahweh pitched his tent in the shadow of the palace. You should have seen David dance before the ark. Some thought the king had made a fool of himself as he marched up the hill. <clears throat> and, the, and the crowd cheered. But the reckless abandon of David's dance and the clear voice of his song showed that our monarch owed allegiance to a greater king. I didn't know David when he was a shepherd boy, but it's easy to imagine him singing to the sheep in the hills of Bethlehem. The whole flock must have been treated to quite a concert now and then. David had a beautiful voice, and he danced with the grace of a seasoned warrior. So the ark camped out in a crude shelter while David enjoyed his palace. And I think that bothered the king more than he let on. David knew that it was like what it was like to sleep out in an army tent or in a cave or even to sleep in the open air. And now, with his power consolidated and his crown secure, it seemed somehow vulgar to have the almighty God camped out in a lean-to David could see out his window. So, the king called in the prophet, me. Always a good idea when you're making big plans. David told me of his sweeping vision for a house for the Ark of the Covenant, a temple for the mercy seat where the presence of Yahweh dwells. If David had chosen, if David had a house of cedar, then so should God. Our monarch owed allegiance to a greater king. So, I told David what prophets are supposed to tell kings. I honestly couldn't have known that I was wrong. You see, King Saul got the same instructions. Once the Holy Spirit has come upon you from on high, you are to do what your hands find to do. God is with you. Saul's hands went back to the plow after that until the Philistines attacked and took up, and then he took up a mantle of leadership. But that's a different story, a, a, a different king. The point is, King David was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He was a man after Yahweh's own heart. David knew he owed his reign to the, king, to the God that he called king. And now God's chosen, anointed leader, wanted to build a house for God's name. Of course, I told him, do what your hands find to do. God is with you. You would have told him the same thing. So, I'm not sure it was entirely my fault, but I was wrong. Without a clear word to the contrary, 
someone who is anointed by the Holy Spirit is supposed to do what's in front of them, do what their hands find to do. Huh. Clear word to the contrary? I would say so. Yahweh himself showed up to give David a clear word to the contrary. Well, actually, God's word came to me. I had to take it to David. Did I mention my job isn't always a gift? I was sent to tell David this. This is what the Lord Almighty says. You want to build for me a house? No, 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 David. I am going to build for you a house. Your son can build my house, the temple, but I will build your house, a dynasty. A son of David will one day sit on an eternal throne, and I will be to him a father, and he will be my own beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And when that son of David ascends his throne, his reign will have no end. So, I was sent to tell David that his dream for the future was all wrong. At least that's what it felt like at the time. I guess I was actually sent to tell David that his dream for the future was not all wrong, but too small. David wasn't going to get what he wanted, but what God wanted to give was so much more than David could have ever dreamed. Still, it's not easy to tell the king that he can't have what he wants. I mean, other kings from other nations are known to kill the messenger. And while David is a man after Yahweh's own heart, he is also a man of war. I always thought that General Joab was behind some of the more bloody politics, but David himself could be pretty brutal too. The man who brought news of King Saul's death was executed for treason, and David gave the order himself. Of course, that man had gloated over the death of the king, but being the bearer of bad news isn't always good for your health, <laughs> especially when it's the ruler of your world who doesn't like your message. So, first thing I did was decided I decided not to gloat and to make sure Joab was away on business. When I went into the king, he was in high spirits. He was already making plans to establish God's dwelling permanently in the capital. I had to get his attention away from the architects, the stonemasons, the carpenters, in order to tell him that the construction project would have to be put on hold. As I told David he had to let go of his own dream for the future, his face hardened. His eyes grew dark. He dismissed his builders coldly. I tried to tell the king that Whatever your hands find to do stuff was more of a general principle, and it wasn't my fault. And after all, all rules have exceptions. But it didn't look like he was buying that. All he heard was me telling him no. For a moment, all the pride and the wrath of a powerful monarch rested on David's brow like a crown. I actually thought I might die. So, I gave up trying to make myself look good, and I just delivered the message that had been entrusted to me. I spoke the word of the Lord instead of speaking my excuses. And then I could actually see a transformation take place. As I spoke God's future over David, I could see the proud king melt away, and the shepherd boy return. David let go of his own dream for God's future in order to embrace God's dream for his future. When I finished the message, the king grabbed me by the elbow, marched me out of the palace, and took me right into the tent of the presence of Yahweh. There were no cedar beams or marble pillars, but David hadn't come to look at the architecture. He sat down to pray, and how he prayed. He poured his words out to God the same way he had danced before the ark with total abandon. I wept openly as I heard a king who knew both his place and his God. <clears throat> who am I, O Lord, 
that you would make such a promise to me. The simple shepherd boy was back. David was always a better king when he was a shepherd first. And the shepherd boy knew how much he depended on his true God for everything he had. David latched onto the promise of a royal heir, a son of David, to sit on an eternal throne, a ruler whom God claimed as his beloved son. David heard the promise, he received the promise, and he let go of his own dreams in order to hold on to the promise. I left him still worshiping, still praising God and God's will and promise for his future, still overcome with gratitude for a promise beyond his deserving. And I went away with a deeper sense of God's heart. What kind of God puts his own comfort aside to make promises to his people? What kind of divine will commits to individuals with a sketchy past and an unreliable future? What kind of God replaces our small dreams for the future with his grand dreams for us? I had to tell David that his plans were being overruled by God's plans, and David received it as a gift. So, it turns out I was wrong, David was wrong, neither of us could have guessed the gracious promise God had in mind. And while it all turned out better than I could have expected, I still had to go in and tell the king that he was wrong. Man, I hope I never have to do that again.